or if you were in a highly manufacturing area out west or Wisconsin comes to mind, you will want to have a computer integrated manufacturing course at your school because, again, depending on where you are locally, that whole partnership model comes into play as well. Because, again, we work with not just the school, but the students, the community, private industry, etc., to make this all work. How are the teachers picked? Our teachers are from every discipline there is. We have the majority of them coming from the technology department at the school. But we've had teachers who were more math teachers, science teachers, art teachers, music teachers. And so in order to teach Project Lead the Way, they have to go through what we call our highly intensive professional development. Some of the teachers who've been through this program call it boot camp. Because before you even get to the middle section here, you have to go through the self-assessment. You actually have to go online and do a self-assessment to give you an idea of where your computer schools are. Um, have you had um, access to um, computer integrated manufacturing software that's used? So you do a self-assessment. Now depending on that self-assessment, which you get the grades back on that, then you are allowed to take the Core Training Summer Institute. Summer Training Institute, or STI, is a two-week course. And what the teachers are learning is basically a full year of coursework, a full year curriculum in two weeks. So you can imagine they're there sun up to sundown, and they are creating portfolios, they're working on projects, they're doing everything that their students would have to do in those two weeks. So yes, it is boot camp, and no, they're not allowed to come home on weekends, and when they come out of that, they are tired, they are exhausted. But for the most part, in every evaluation I've read of the STI, Summer Training Institute, they have been so jazzed and excited and rejuvenated that some teachers who are considering taking retirement or phasing out, you know, going to do something else, have decided to take uh, Project Lead the Way to teach that course and go to the Summer Training Institute and have been just revived in terms of being an educator. And when you have passionate educators working with our young people, that's half the battle right there. If they love what they're teaching, the students love what they're learning. And for all us at Project Lead the Way, it's all about teaching and learning. And then after they go to Summer Training Institute, let's say they went in July, and then come January, we're getting to that topic in the coursework that they're like, oh, I'm a little bit rusty and I don't remember that quite well. We have what's called the PLTW Continuous Training. They have virtual academy, which they can go online 24-7 at any time and pull down that unit that they're going to teach in January that they did back in June. They refresh your course, go through it, be ready to teach it next time. <coughs> Do you have a question? Okay. These are some of the partners that we have as far as universities are concerned. We're close to 40 different universities we're working with. And again, when we started back in 1996, we had one university, Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York, which is about four hours from where Project Vida is located. But since then, we've added up all these other universities to this is where the actual training takes place, that two-week boot camp occurs. Biomedical Sciences program kicked off about two years ago. Um, we decided to create a biomedical sciences track because we were finding in our studies, and we have an outside evaluation firm, that there are a great need, a great cry for those who want to be involved in engineering, but on the biomedical sciences side of things. So this takes into account everything that we're doing on the engineering side, but with the biomedical sciences has the, the emphasis. We had seven states that actually funded us to write this coursework, and those states put up minimum $250,000 for that coursework to be written. And we have grown exceedingly in that program as well. I'm not gonna go through all the courses that we have, but right now we have four courses in biomedical sciences, the principles of EMS, human body systems, medical interventions, and our capstone course. They also go to that same two-week boot camp in terms of being able to teach a biomedical sciences course. Our curriculum is based upon research that's been done for the past 12, 13 years and beyond on how people learn, understanding by design, achieving rigor, rigor and relevance, because for us, our curriculum is all project-based, hands-on, problem-solving. That's what it's all about. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember back in high school sitting in a math class or even a science class and figuring, what am I going to do with this? Why am I learning this? 
uh, we take Project Lead the Way courses, and as a matter of fact, in order to take a Project Lead the Way course in your high school, you must be enrolled in a, in a college preparatory math course simultaneously. You have to have that math course on your transcript and, and studying that as well in order to take Project Lead the Way. So we take that question of why am I doing this out of the equation, and our research has been helpful in helping us determine that. I just spoke about rigor relevance, and here's our framework that we use to determine. If you look along the side here, starting with awareness and moving up to scale, that's the Bloom's level of learning. For us, when it gets up to six on that scale, when you can actually evaluate what you're learning, and then cross the bottom, be able to apply that to unpredictable circumstances, that's where you are at the high rigor, high context, high relevance of education. Who should take Project Lead the Way courses? Anyone. Absolutely anyone, actually. Um, and here, you know, we just put a few bullets up there as far as so what we have found to be those students who are successful taking Project Lead the Way. They thrive in project problem, problem solving types of activities. They love to get your hands in there and take things apart and rebuild. They love to work together in groups. They love to work alone. They're a hands-on learner. And for most of our students, and especially the population that we're targeting, hands-on is the way to learn. Engineering is solving problems to make a difference in the world. There's not anything that you can think of that you cannot say, wow, if I can make that better. And so to take that creativity, that ingenuity, and to be able to say, I can do that as an engineer, is what we, we love about being able to bring Project Lead Away to the schools that we're bringing it to. It's not just building bridges and skyscrapers either. The young people who I talk to when I go out and do um, engagements like this, they're like, oh, crashing expensive cars, oh, that's, a, that's engineering, absolutely. <laughs> Everyone has watched CSI or heard about CSI, Miami, New York, etc. We need engineers in that area as well. And they're like, oh, I said, well, hey, that's engineering. Creating a robot that can save people from burning buildings, or a robot that can take care of cleaning up your room. They're like, oh, engineering. I said, absolutely. And pharmaceutical engineering, and, um, I remember a young person uh, talking about that, and it was like, yeah. So I can be the person who designs and develops that cure for cancer. Says, absolutely, you can do that. Financial engineering, which, Quite recently, um, <laughs> yeah, high, high, high need for that, you know, definitely. Financial engineering, analyzing, you know, why we are in the economic state that we're in right now. Making a difference and changing the world. I'm going to go through the next few slides very quickly so I don't want to take time away from my colleagues, but just to let you know that engineering is not only what we expect our students to be able to go on to study in community college or or college. If by chance they go through Project Lead the Way and decide they don't want to be an engineer, that's great. That's fine because they figured it out before they went and spent forty thousand dollars, you know, at that school. So they can learn, you know, other things to, to launch them onto different um, opportunities. Entering medical school, becoming a CEO, teachers, writers, etc. Just quickly, I don't know if there are any folks from school districts in the room, but it can be done. It can be done. A lot of folks ask me, well, how am I going to take Project Lead the Way if my student also is, you know, in band, is on the debate team, is student government, you know, play sports, etc., etc. I had that same challenge because our daughter did all those things as well. And here's a sample schedule for you that you can see that it can be done. Now, for my daughter, our daughter decided you don't need to have study hall because I remember study hall when I was in high school. What does study hall do? But give me 40 minutes of getting help. All right, so she never had a study hall when she was in high school because she doubled up taking Project Lead away and all her other courses. And that shows you where we can plug them in on that student schedule. What students are taking Project Lead away courses? Just kidding, no, no, cancel. Cancel. And again, just so that we make sure we have enough time for everyone's 
presentation here.